Hello and welcome to another Demon 212 X360 review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Battlefield 3, which if you've never played it before or you've been living under a rock or from another planet and you've never heard of Battlefield, then it's basically a first person shooter. Um, I see that because Battlefield's probably as infamous as COD, despite the fact that COD usually sells more, despite usually being the inferior game, at least in my opinion. Uh, I'm going to start with the campaign. I know that's probably going to come to a shock to some people because at the end of the day the campaign's on disc 2 which kind of proves what this game's aiming for but I am going to still start with the campaign. Um, first up I'll go into my soldier which is simply the same as the um, well same as building a soldier on COD. You can check your stats, your progression, you can customise so you can build a class. There's no perks on the game that is a COD thing so thankfully there's no well faster reloading or stronger bullets or anything like that. Um, options wise you've got a whole heap of stuff that you can do because there's controls for so many different things it's unbelievable. Um, like your jet controls, your helicopter controls, your regular vehicles, um, just things like that. So you can spend a long time in the options customising and tweaking your heart's content. Um, stores obviously for DLC of which there isn't any out at the moment and extras are just the usual. Um, credits which never I don't understand why they always go into extras but they do and also the manual because a year have been incredibly cheap and not included a paper manual with this game so if you open the box and you're missing one don't worry you're not supposed to have one so let's cut to the actual game then with the uh, campaign I'll be honest I am not going to say a nice word about this I think honestly this is one of the worst campaigns I've ever played the stories of case have been there done that the AI is so moronic it's unbelievable there's uh, actually a part in a car park early on in the game that the enemies come from point A point B and if you stand in the in intersection where those points meet to create point C then the enemies will run in shoot you once and then run straight past you and not bother with you anymore it's just absolutely awful I think everything about the campaign is just terrible I'm afraid but this is a battlefield game at the end of the day and it's not supposed to be about the campaign it's supposed to be about the multiplayer so I'll mention a couple of things um, the overall experience can be beaten in a handful of hours it's incredibly short it's even shorter than the majority of the modern warfare games which I usually slate for being too short uh, it's got a handful of co-op missions, and to be fair, I see a handful, it's got just over a handful, because a handful would be five, technically, and it's got six. And that basically means you can't play the whole game in co-op, you're just playing a couple of select missions, and you're probably going to want to do them, because while they are kind of fun, the main thing you want to do them for is the fact that you get weapon unlocks. Uh, there's not really much else I could actually see about the campaign. It's just really, as I say, a generic run around, shoot this, do that. Um, there are a couple sections where you're doing the what you've just seen there with interacting with um, things like uh, push the right trigger now, push the uh, this, that, and the other now. Just a load of I can never remember what they're called, but those are sort of interactive scenes. The pretty much in every single game these days even though they don't really need to be in certain genres and I think this is one of them that definitely doesn't need to be and from what I've heard on the PC it's not even as imaginative as changing the buttons it's a case of click the left mouse button three times or things like that uh, anyway quick time events I suppose is what they would be called and there's sections where like you have to follow a wire through a vent and like an air duct and that and when you got the wire you then have to do a quick time event to kill an enemy to yank the wire out for the most part though it is just your standard run here do this shoot this um, there's a couple vehicles in the missions however there's not that many and as I say, that there's not really much I can therefore see about the campaign. I just personally can't stand it. But as I've already said, this isn't really designed to be the campaign to end all campaigns. It's not designed to be a Half-Life game. It's designed to be a COD competitor. So the online multiplayer is what you're buying the game for. So let's cut into that. So, 
under the multiplayer, there's five different modes. You've got Squad Rush, which, uh, just very quickly mentioned, because it's on the screen, Squad Rush is a test of skill and fight to, uh, sorry, tight team play. Uh, you may have recalled from earlier videos, I really do have bad eyesight, so apologies for that. It's tight team play. Two four-man squads battle over two single MCOM stations, and just as regular Rush, the attacking team must destroy, etc. Um, squad Deathmatch is, again, squad version of a deathmatch. Team Deathmatch is team deathmatch. Rush is what I've just mentioned for Rush. Fair for Squad Rush, but it's not squads um, and conquest is pretty much what battlefield's most famous for you've got to go around collecting points uh, it was the mode that pretty much i think it was the only mode battlefield 2 had if it wasn't then it was the only mode i played on battlefield 2 modern combat not bad company 2 but battlefield 2 um, and there's nine different maps even if you get the limited edition version which comes with a free map pack because the map pack isn't actually out yet i really do hear that when developers do this um why see it by the limited edition get all these maps from battlefield 2 and then you put it on and it's like sorry you can't access them yet because they haven't been released well that's nice of you yeah Anyway, you can uh, go to Quick Match if you want to, but I find Quick Match rarely works. I find going into the server menu is probably better and finding yourself a game where there's only, see, a 20 or 18 people playing, so that way you've got a better chance of joining. Because all of these with 23 out of 24, you might try to join and someone else might have tried to join at the exact same time. So, because of that, I'm going to have to cut into the gameplay because no idea how long it's going to take to actually join a game. Well... Took me about 15 minutes, but I finally got into a game. Um, <laughs> when it when you join a game, it does ask you if you want to play in a squad or by yourself, and I always select by myself when I am by myself, but squads are a decent idea if you've got mates to play with. If not, there's not really much point in activating a squad because it just means that a couple people know where you are pretty much on the map, and they don't really care about you because they're not playing with you really it's it does seem a bit pointless to have it when like active when you're not playing with mates anyway whereas on battlefield 2 modern combat you had five classes or seven on the pc with this you've got four whereas on battlefield 2 modern combat you couldn't unlock weapons this you can unlock weapons so if you've got no life you can sit there to your heart's content playing this game unlocking all the best kit that is one of the things that i absolutely hate about this game i hated it in modern warfare i hated it in any card game and i hated in this there's no place for it if your game's good enough then people will continue to play it online they do not need an unlock system point in case half-life 1 16 year old almost still gets played quite regularly quake 3 well 12 year old still gets played all the time online so you can obviously customize a couple things but you can only customize the classes so here with um the assault i can give him an ak or an 870 at the moment because i've not played as the assault i've only played as him in the beta because i pretty much play as the engineer but you can't obviously therefore customize your classes to the point that you can just create a fully customized class you can just create uh, your version of a recon your version of a support your version of an engineer and your version of an assault um the reason i end up playing as the engineer is mainly because he's got an um, AK and I do like those and mainly because he's also got the ability to repair vehicles so if you're in a vehicle they'll start getting repaired and if you get out the vehicle you can repair them with a little blowtorch he's also got an RPG so he can take down heavy weaponry so personally I like that I used to like the sniper rifle class but in all honesty with Battlefield 2, I would never feel like I was screwed over when fighting an enemy because of the weaponry. On this game, I don't feel like that at all, unless I'm using a sniper rifle. When I can then shoot someone in the head three times, only for the third headshot to actually appear, congratulations, you got a headshot and killed the enemy. Or, for example, he was lying there prone, and I managed to get up and walk across to him, him not see me, and point blank range with a sniper rifle, shoot him five times before he died. I don't know what it is about the sniper class. I absolutely love playing as him, but the amount of times I just get screwed over, it is so annoying, it's unbelievable. And without wanting to turn this into a too much of a slag fest, I'm going to mention a couple of things that I really like about it. You've just seen there when I died, which uh, believe it or not, I was actually trying to die. Um, something that's quite nice that comes up on any other game it shows you a kill cam but on this it shows you how much energy the other person had so at least then that way you can know if you were hitting them 
uh, it is quite nice because the amount of times on games you would shoot someone and you say, I'm positive I shot him, how's he not dead? Well, this comes up. Well, you did actually nearly kill him. You got, you got down to 5% health. So at least in that way, you can kind of feel better. And that's, again, why this game doesn't really feel like it's screwed yet, except with, as I say, the sniper rifle. And it might just be that I don't have a very good sniper rifle unlocked because I have a life and I've not been able to sit and play this game for 50 hours since launch. Uh, I don't know if that is simply the case. But as I say, when you go up to someone and they're lying prone right on the deck and you can shoot them five times right there and for them to die on the fifth bullet, it kind of does take the piss a little bit. Um, vehicles on the game, I used to absolutely love them on BF2 on this. I'm not really keen, I think the jeeps aren't fast enough, the tanks aren't manoeuvrable enough, the jets, to be fair I only ever played as them on the PC and I hated them on that as well, um, and the helicopters I think have been made so awkward to use you really do have to practice with them to get any good, whereas before with the helicopters, after a couple hours in one I was pretty much sorted and I could go around and just kick ass and play a ride of the Valkyries in my head and do really well with them. And speaking of the helicopters, I can at least show one of these off now, because usual rules apply really with me reviews. I'm not exactly going to be able to show absolutely everything off. Being able to do that is going to be impossible, especially because being an online game, you can all of a sudden just get booted. So I'll show off as much as I can in as much time as I can really. But for now, this is a helicopter. You can change your viewpoint if you want to. And I personally prefer flying like this. This is easier for finding out if you're getting shot, but I personally prefer flying like this. And I'm probably more likely going to die now anyway, because even though I'm holding on to the right trigger, I seem to be losing altitude quite rapidly. But I've mentioned, as I say, the things that I'm not too keen on. I'll go back to mentioning the things that I am keen on. The map design's actually pretty good. I really like it. Uh, even though, as I say, there's only nine, even if you get limited edition, that's a different gripe for a different deal, though. I've been there, done that. Um, but the map design is quite good. I do like it. Graphically, the game looks really good, and I'd imagine on the PC it'll look absolutely amazing. Also, the PC is probably going to be the better game anyway, because I believe that's 64 player online, whereas this is 24 player online. The reason we don't have it on the PC is because my little brother and my mate were getting the game, and they both were getting it on the Xbox, so it was a case of, um, huh, invisible wall. Oh well, uh, it was a case of we wanted to be able to play with them, so we got it on the Xbox as much as I would have preferred it on the PC, as I say. But gameplay wise, it's decent, uh, and that's, I apologise, that's going to cause a whole load of shit online with flaming and everything, but that's the best I can say. You've got to understand, I was beyond addicted to Battlefield 2, I played it all the time. It, it, as far as I'm concerned, it's the best online game ever to come out. I absolutely loved everything about it. I loved the airstrikes, which don't appear to be on this and I'd like to see them on the uh, Battlefield 2 maps quite frankly because I miss them even though it usually resulted in a case of one asshole on your team camping it out and then whenever you went near them he friendly fired to kill you so it actually became a point of you had a friendly fire to get the airstrike to then try and get seven or eight kills and do really well on the map even though it had its annoyances like that I still absolutely loved the airstrike um, I'd like to think they'll do some tweaks to the game over the coming months to make the vehicles a bit better but at the moment all I can see is it's playable I'll have some fun with it but in all honesty I'd rather be playing Battlefield 2 just a shame I can't because they shut the servers down uh, I'd like to see it I hope Modern Warfare is going to be better but in all honesty I've never been a Modern Warfare fan I think the campaigns are decent but the multiplayer is just atrocious I never play it I absolutely hate it and without wanting to be a glutton for punishment because at the moment I'm currently just some easy kill for some guy because I can't concentrate uh, there is one final thing I can mention but it's not so much about the game it's about the online pass there's people who are complaining that they're getting the game and the online passes aren't working which then means you have to jump through hoops with EA because they're not a simple case of oh certainly we've checked that code you're right it doesn't work we'll give you another one it's a case of having to contact the retail you, you got it from and getting another online code from them there's reports of this that and the other with that really so 
just to warn you, you might want to research where you're buying it from, just in case you're buying it from the retailer that's having that problem. Uh, I don't know them, so I honestly can't say it. Uh, that's pretty much, I know it's vague, and I apologise, but I don't know who it is, the kind of being secretive about it. But just warning you to try and check out, like maybe ask your mate, where did you get it from, that sort of thing. Uh, and the whole point that I'm even having to say this is absolutely ridiculous anyway because I really do hate these online passes. They just totally take the piss. There's no point for them. There's no need for them. Pre-owned games market actually helps games sell. There was never a problem with the pre-owned games market until the technology came around to be able to actually do something about it, to rip gamers off by charging them an online pass, which tends to be, well, in the case of Batman, it's 10% uh, of the game as there's so much advertised for 20% of the price, so that's really fair. Uh, <laughs> It's just really is a joke with these online passes, especially because Batman's is an offline pass. And same with Rage, to be fair. The fact that I can't actually lend this game to my brother anymore. He had to buy his own copy to be able to play it online. Which, don't get me wrong, he probably would have done anyway so we could all play it together. But the fact that I can't even lend it to him for him to give it a go really does take the piss. I don't understand why all of a sudden gamers are scum in the eyes of publishers and why they're allowed to treat people like crap. Uh, apologies for that little mini rant, but it's been building up for years now of constant abuse, mainly from EA, doing the online passes, so I thought, might as well mention it on an EA game. But the online passes gripe is pretty much the same as me gripe with camping. I don't understand why the hell it's still allowed in games, and you may be thinking, when well, how can you stop it? Well, it did. And in case you don't know who id are, they are the makers of Doom, Quake, Rage, etc. And in Quake 3, if you stood around for too long, then you'd start to die. If you did die from it, it actually came up, blah blah blah, died of camping. So immediately you had a bullseye on your head from everyone out there. They knew who the camper was and they knew who to go after because they knew who was doing it. If id could do it with Quake 3, which as I say, like, it's probably about 12 years old now at least. Uh, if they can do it that long ago, why can't anyone else do it? I'm not talking about standing in the same place for 5 seconds, but if you stand in the same general 2 metre area for about a minute and a half, you should just drop dead and it should come up who done it and it should see which part of the map. Because it really is annoying that... In the end of the day, people can just sit on this game, learn where the spawn points are, and see if there was a spawn point in here. You just have people lying prone in here, waiting until they're spawned, just ready to fire. And it really does ruin the majority of the, enjoy of the enjoyment for the majority of people, because campers are a minority, and that's about all I can say. So there we go then. That's been the review. I hope you found it helpful. I don't score the games because that's based purely on opinion, so instead, I'll leave you to make your own mind up. So thanks for watching, and if you've got any questions about the game that I didn't answer in the vid, or that hasn't been answered in the comments, then feel free to ask, and I'll help if I can. Also, if you did find it helpful, don't forget to check out my channel, because there's plenty more like this up there, and don't forget to subscribe, because there'll be plenty more to come as well. So until next time, this has been Demon212, signing off.